Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting and security program. And today what we're going to dive into is a free tool called Process Hacker. And we're going to talk about how it can support both your incident response and threat hunting activities. So let's hop right in. So what is Process Hacker? So Process Hacker, it's a free, powerful, multi-purpose tool that helps you monitor system resources, debug software, and in the case we'll talk about today, detect malware and malicious activity. These are actually the words from Process Hacker itself. It is available on SourceForge on the link you see right there. And what Process Hacker does, um, particularly for us as security pro um, professionals, is give us information dynamically of processes and services running it gives us information like, hey, what network connections um, are going to and from these processes, what ports are bound, what memory locations and values are out there, what resources on the box, DLLs, files, registry key. What is this process doing exactly on the box? What are its behavior? Um, we'll jump more into this week. We're going to talk about digging through process behavior Next week, we'll talk a little more on the service and network connection side. What's really nice though with Process Hacker is that you can install it or it also works as a portable application. So if you're going into an engagement where you don't have permissions to install an application on a host, the good news is you can still use the portable versions of Process Hacker without installing it or you can go ahead and install it and roll it out that way um, if you use uh, those features inside a mobile device manager or device manager, um, you can totally roll it out that way. So first pro tip on using Process Hacker and something to note as we jump into it is that permissions do matter. And so what we have here is Process Hacker started two different ways. On the left, you have Process Hacker started with administrative permissions on the right, you have it started without. If you look at that username column, um, second one from the right, you'll see NT authority system on a lot of the processes to where if you look at the others, you don't see the process owner for those. Again, this is where permissions matter because if you start process hacker as the user, it's only going to be able to see what that user can see which means you won't have full visibility on the box on what's going on. So first trip, um, or if you're new and make this mistake, um, just remember permissions do matter when you're using Process Hacker. But as I said, the feature we're really going to dive in today is exploring processes with Process Hacker. As you open it, the first tab you'll see is the Processes tab. And what you're presented with is the hierarchy of parent-child processes um, running on the machine. Now, where this is useful is if we're doing a very quick behavioral check, knowing the parent and child process can help us see what is immediately unusual. And you know what I describe as that is often what's out of place, right? Um, as your analyst skills grow and as your intuition grows, um, you're going to grow for kind of what your SNP test of what good and bad is. Um, for example, a good example you might use is let's look for shell com or for cmd.exe. Let's look for command prompts and what applications they're running under. There are applications to where you'll normally see command prompts running under that application, and that's perfectly fine. And then there's applications to where when you see a command prompt running under them, that's suspicious, right? Like take Microsoft Word, take Microsoft Excel, right? you generally don't see command prompts running under those processes. So if you do see them, you might say, hey, this is something we need to check out because maybe we got fish. Maybe there's something off going on with this. The other advantage with this of this view is with double clicking into it, if you have that command prompt under Microsoft Word or under Microsoft Excel, you can click on that child process and as we'll see in the next slide, you can see the command line. You can begin to dig in and see, hey, let me identify if this is normal or if this actually is malicious behavior. Um, so again, we're going to show pivoting into a given process, but on this screen we have that, you know, parent-child process relationship shown in there. 
So when we double click on one, what we're brought up to is the properties tab of the given process. In the example we showed today, we use CodeMeter. Um, this is a common licensing manager that you'll see with a lot of software product products. And so there are software products, right? To run the product, you need that USB key. Um, CodeMeter is one of those applications that tracks, hey, is the license that's encrypted on this USB key, um, is it valid, right? And if it's valid, we'll allow the application to open up. Why we chose this process was CodeMeter actually does bind ports, it does use resources. So it's a really good process for us to talk through because it has that network component, it has the you know, handles and modules component we'll see filled out. But for any process you're interested in, from this property window, what we can see again is that command line information to know, hey, what arguments were passed into this? If you're looking down PowerShell.exe, right? There are a lot of attackers that'll do base64 encoded commands and they'll pass it to PowerShell.exe, right? That's something you'll see in the command line, right? Command line can often expose you know, nefarious or malicious intent um, for the arguments in there. You have the directory that it's running out of. You begin to get some memory information. Again, you have the parent process information here. You have security features like DEP and ASLR, other built-in Windows features that make it harder to exploit or to abuse an application. Um, you can see here security features that are disabled is the important context in here, right? To say, hey, this application normally does have these security features enabled, and now it's disabled, right? Process Hacker, it's not just about monitoring. The other thing to note here is you actually can modify process permissions. You can turn down permissions on a project process or turn them up. You can also terminate a process. So if you're actually responding, you could use Process Hacker actually to kill the process if that's what you needed to do. So we're not going to hit every tab, but we are going to talk through a few tabs and talk about you know, why they're important to either help you along your journey or to get you started. So tokens is the next one. So tokens in the concept of the operating system, a token gives a given application certain permissions under a given user level. So if you scroll in here closely, um, you can see things like SE change notify privilege, right? Um, this one's enabled by default for this given process, right? And we see users also um, that are able to manipulate with this process. Tokens, there is actually a MITRE ATT&CK technique tied to tokens. Um, this also is one that a lot of attackers use out there. Um, and what Process Explorer allows us to do is, what are the tokens that are assigned to that given application, right? Because if a application does have a token and an attacker knows um, that that application has that token, the attacker might manipulate or abuse that application um, to either elevate permissions or to gain execution or to do you know, some other action that they need to during their attack campaign. Process Hacker shows us the relationship or that trust relationship below um, what's going on to know, hey, what, what permissions and what ability can an application actually do? Process Hacker also, again, can revoke tokens from the application. Um, so if you wanna see, hey, does this application still run without this given, pro without this given token? that's something you can certainly uh, experiment with with Process Hacker, is that live changing of permissions within the application. Modules, this is a really important one. Modules show what DLLs or other resources an application's using. So DLLs, dynamically linked libraries, these are ways that programs can um, bring in at runtime functionality from other um, DLLs on disk. Sometimes these DLLs will be built-in Windows DLLs if the attacker is living off the land, um, or DLLs, honestly, um, applications use them to not have to write the code, right? Um, or you'll see malicious DLLs. So in the event of the Ukraine 2016 attack on the energy infrastructure, the attackers actually brought in their own DLLs with their own export functions and called them from the malware itself. In this case, if you were looking at the malware, you would see, hey, Attacker called a, um, you know, attacker dropped file, and then, hey, we started seeing the control system get the traffic as the DLL was called. 
And here modules are important because it also helps you know what a application's actually doing. And so if you see a DLL get pulled in and you see functionality related to network traffic, right? You'd say, okay, this application is using network traffic features, right? Um, Modules often do give a view again into the behavior of a given application in there. What's nice here too is if you want to export that given DLL, you can do it directly from here to say, hey, is this DLL actually the DLL I expect to see here? Memory, very, very powerful feature of Process Hacker. So um, the memory tab, it'll show you all allocated or all related memory um, to this given process. It also shows you things like the access permissions, right? So there's a tab in there for, is this a read only part of memory? Is this read write? Um, and again, for that, you can begin to look for, hey, do I see an attacker using maybe, you know, a very advanced memory um, manipulation attack as part of it? Again, there's a lot of attack techniques for that. We aren't going to dive too deep into them, but the really powerful feature to know about with Process Hacker is the fact that with Process ha Hacker, you can actually save out portions of memory um, in bin files on disk. So if you take them to something like Bulk Extractor, Volatility, or other memory toolkits, um, you can use Bulk Extractor, or you can use, sorry, you can use um, Process Hacker to actually dump the portion of memory you're interested in and then do further analysis from that. If you double click on the memory portion in here, and again, it shows you the offset. What you can see on the bottom right um, is actually the contents of memory that you see there. And that's actually the window that you're able to save from. Handles, again, we talked a little about modules on doing this for DLLs. If we're curious what registry keys, files, directories, mutexes, semaphores, anything that uses an operating system handle, um, we can look at that here, right? So. If they're doing something like run key persistence, right? We might see them, you know, write to the run keys on the window or on windows to actually, you know, get that ability to execute when windows starts, right? Um, if we're looking for semaphores or mutexes, we know tied to malware campaigns that are used to say, hey, we're not going to infect this box or we have infected this box which a lot of malware authors actually do use mutexes, some use semaphores for it too. We can explore those with Process Hacker and see, hey, this application actually did write to this mutex or did write this semaphore out. So today what we did is we did a quick overview of um, exploring processes in Process Hacker. Next week, like I said, we'll dig more into the network side we'll dig more into the digging through services side. But the point this week was to really get you started um, or to maybe show you features that you hadn't used if you're already using Process Hacker. Thanks for tuning in this week and we hope to see you back next week.